All right. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, wow, that was, that was that was great. That was a great worship session. I don't know if you guys had one. Amen. That was a great worship session. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, up in this place. I know sometimes it's like crazy loud back there on the drums. I need a cake back there. And I just, because I, I get lost. I try to control my stuff. You know, I'm trying to like play song because it's open. But, you know, you gotta like, you know, have you ever like, who's, who's had a crush before? What? Who's had a crush before? Like a crush with somebody? A crush? Like, come on, be honest. Have you had a crush before? Because you're gonna, I'm gonna give you the best analogy for this. Who's had a crush before? So if you had a crush, right, you do like anything you can to like get them to talk to you or be like with you, whatever, right? You're trying to get them to be your boyfriend, girlfriend, like tripping over yourself, just trying to do things to impress them, right? Show them you kind of love them and you like them, right? That's how it is with like worship the Lord, right? You do just so you can show love. You do what might look weird, because you know when you're in love, you do some weird things, right? Uh, come on. Yeah, yeah, they do some weird, stupid things. They're like, man, I would have never done that. I don't know why it's never like that, right? They do some weird, stupid things. So, but for the Lord, it's it's like that, but like times a thousand. Like, one, don't stop what you're doing. You're over here praising and worshiping the Lord the way He does. Mm -hmm. If you're praising and worshiping the Lord the way you do, don't stop. If it gets weird, it's okay. Because it's you showing your love for the Lord. I just want to say that because I know sometimes we serve ourselves because there might be people around. But because you know, playing the drums that on the open. But don't preserve yourself. It's okay to, to let loose and show your love for God the way you want, like the way you want. Alright, so, right out the back, sin is hiding. It's hiding in crazy places. It's filtering itself for goodness. And, and it's dressed up an angel of light. Guess what? It's the devil. Sin is the devil. Um, don't fall for it. At all, and uh, we're just gonna get like right into it because the spirit is moving. I might say some stuff that's not even in my notes right now. <laughs> Woo! I'm like, it's like heartbeat. All right, so right off the bat, forgiveness is a choice. It's not something that happens. I'm talking about forgiveness, I love that Ashley was like, even if you're mad at somebody, you praise <laughs> the Lord, right? <laughs> Amen. All right. By the end of this, I want you guys, and I hope you realize how much of a sin filter unforgiveness is. And how we must repent, seek after God's own heart, and make the right choice to forgive. I'm moving around a lot, I know. Keep going. Today I'm gonna to show you what true forgiveness looks like, but I'm not gonna show you how, because I can't really show you how, that's, that's your part. Your part is how do I, or how can this be done? Why is forgiveness so hard, right? Um, you know, we all have we all have a story. Everybody has their own story, their own testimony, and dealing with forgiveness, right? Why is it so hard? Why why is it so hard for us to do the one thing God has done a thousand times over? God went on the cross, and one of the main things He did was took our sin on that cross and forgave us for everything we do, even to the last few words of saying, forgive them for they do not forgive you. And Jesus says in his word that when he leaves, well, he will bring the comforter and we'll be able to do things like he did and greater. So then why can we not do this simple thing but to forgive? You know, I, I've asked this question so many times in my life, like God, I understand you forgave me. Help me understand how I can forgive. Because every day we should be on our knees asking for forgiveness, because we're sinners, and every day we stay in unforgiveness, we're sinning, because as we're gonna see, forgiveness is the obedience of the heart, just as if we were to confess the word of God, uh, to, to confess that God is Lord in our lives and believe in our heart the same way. So, I would ask myself, why? why? Why is it so hard? Not only to forgive people, but to forgive myself because sometimes we're on the opposite end of forgiveness with people where we're looking for mercy. And so I would ask God, why, 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 why? why? Like, help me understand this. Like, help me truly understand, like, this is my father. Like, I want to have this love relationship with him, but I can't because of my forgiveness. 
Like this, these are people I love, like I'm supposed to love, right? You're supposed to love your parents or your family or your best friends or whatever happened. And we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters because that's what the word says. And so I would ask God, how, 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 how? So I was asking the wrong question. And what's weird is that it seems to us, to us walking around, seeing the world and things like that, it seems to us um, that some people can do it. They can forgive. But, but I couldn't. I can't. I was looking around and I was like, I can't. And, I, and what we're really going to dig into is, is changing the question of how to forgive. Because, you know, 99% of the time, 98, 98, most of the time, unforgiveness comes from a place of birth. Always. Always, always, most of the time, I've never seen unforgiveness come from somewhere else than a place of hurt or pain, whether it be emotional, physical, or mental. It was just, it was just hurt. It was somebody broke you, somebody backstabbed you, somebody, you saw something that was just unforeseen. It was just too much to bear at the moment. And there's this book in the New Testament called Philemon. Who's heard of the book Philemon? Like four people called nice. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. I was saying last night trying to think, Philemon, Philemon, I don't know. Philemon, right? Um, and then that book, we can investigate to see a part of what forgiveness kind of looks like and how we're supposed to go about it. Um, just a little background of the book, Paul's writing to Philemon, of course. Um, so it was called On Behalf of His Slave, though, Onesimus. Paul's actually writing this on behalf of a slave. Um, and as we read, uh, we're going to read just uh, uh, two verses, uh, not two, a couple of verses from it, five verses from it. But if you were to read it, you'll see that Paul is calling to Philemon to forgive Onesimus of all his debts and to charge all of his accounts unto Paul. Now we have to figure out, oh, what? How do you just tell somebody random to, to forgive somebody? Like, you don't know the situation. But Paul and Philemon's relationship at this time is like my titos, brothers. I can trust him, like I trust his word, his guidance and obedience, and that's kind of how Philemon trusts Paul's guidance um, in, in, in another sense. Uh, Paul is the older one. And another way we can see their, their, how strong their bond is when we're reading this is we have to remember Paul wrote a bunch of books in the Bible, right? Most of the time he wrote to churches, but there's three people he wrote to, and that was Philemon, Titus, and Timothy. Titus and Timothy. Their books were, you know, more towards what was going on in the outside world, how to stay strong against the outside world. Philemon's letter that Paul wrote to Philemon, directly to Philemon, for Onesimus to take him, was very personal. We're going to see that. Um, we're going to read the first, uh, verse 8 and 9. Like I said, up to this, Paul's just kind of introduced, like he always says, introduces, in the Lord name of Jesus, all that stuff, you guys can read it, but I want to hit these key points right here. Uh, verse 8 and 9, in line with all this, I have a favor to ask you. As Christ's ambassador, and now a prisoner for him, I wouldn't hesitate to demand this if I thought it would, uh, if I thought it necessary. But I'd rather make it a personal request. Like I was saying before, Paul takes this to a, another level. Paul takes this to like, you're my brother. I'm not doing this because I'm, you know, I am the Christ's ambassador, right? I'm this, I'm the leader in the church for Christ and the movement for Christ. But I'm doing this because it's personal to me, for you, right? And in other translations, if we want to put it up real quick, in verse 8 of the ESV, it says, Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required. And see, he knows that because the Father has backed him, Paul, we understand where Paul is coming through. Paul's not just speaking because it's Paul. Paul's speaking because he knows that he's backed by the Father. And he says, it is required. Hmm. You know, throughout through the next verses, he goes on to explain how him and Onesimus met, how through Paul we can see and figure out that Onesimus, the slave, probably stole or did something wrong to his master, which was Philemon, and ran away. He actually ran away, and that's how he met Paul. But the letter that he gives to Onesimus, finding out that he's actually the slave of his friend Philemon, is to encourage Philemon to do something specific. And let's read it here in verse 17 to 20. So if you still consider me a comrade in arms, a brother in arms, welcome him back as you would. 
If he damaged anything or owes you anything, chalk it to my account. Chalk it up to my account. This is my personal signature, Paul, and I stand behind it. I don't need to remind you, do I, that you owe your very life to me. Do me this big favor, friend. You'll be doing it for, the, for Christ, but it will also do my heart good. So yeah, it kind of seems like, hey, you know, you owe me one, but Paul's trying to get at it personal. That's why he put that in there. He put that directly in that letter so he can get personal. So he can tell him, hey, this is for real. This is not like, hey, I, just, I think you should do this. It's like, hey, you should do this. Why? 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 Why is why should Philemon forgive? Because we got to understand it from his perspective. We've been reading for Paul on behalf of Onesimus, but we have to realize from Philemon's perspective. As a slave owner, right? Philemon's a slave owner. He's the master. Onesimus was property to him. He was property to him, right? He was, that was it. That was his slave. Um, and yes, you know, like it, like it, it kind of you know, references here, he might have stole something, but if nothing else, he ran and hid, leaving his responsibilities behind, right? And while it's easy to understand why he would want to do that, on a seamless being a slave, why he would want to be free, we also must understand why Phil would be angry. So we can get two sides to really what forgiveness looks like. And it's crazy because sometimes that, that happens to us, right? Sometimes somebody does something to you and you're like, okay, Wow, that was, you know, and then like immediately, open wound, boom, something else happens. And you're like, really? Like, that, that's it. Like, I can't trust you no more. I can't do it no more. And so that's kind of what Philemon's doing. He's like, I probably would have trusted you after the first offense, but I can't. I can't. I can't forgive you after you did it. Like, and you ran away. And for us, it's like, after you did it a second time or after you did something else on top of that. See, what happens is unforgiveness doesn't allow us to see people the way God sees them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we we kind of see these people as like non-people, like non, like they don't exist. They're just like evil. Like, because why because we say we don't we don't hate them necessarily because you know hate is bad. God, you know, God says don't hate your brother. Or lest you be a murderer, you know what I mean? Like, so we don't say we hate them, but we treat them as like pure evil, like nothing more. Like you're just the evil person. Like you're evil. Like you're not a person to me, you're just evil. But we only see through our eyes and not theirs. And more importantly, we have to understand how we can see through God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And when we live with unforgiveness in our heart, we live with this like hook and chain that connects us to that person. And we take that person and their quote unquote evil that they did to us and we drag them through our lives and wonder why it's so hard. Mm. So you, all of you, you choose to keep that hook in there and only you can let it go. But, but I don't, nah, 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 nah. I, they're out of my lives. I'm, I'm just done with it, I'm over it. No, no, no. You, but you don't understand what I've gone through. But I don't have to. Me, anybody else, doesn't have to. We can come to an understanding, some type of, you know, level, agreement. But God, God already knows and he understands. Like I said before, a thousand times over. This one offense, that you've been dragging around your whole life. This one offense, this one person, in this one moment, did this so unforeseeable thing. And, oh, but you can't, you don't understand what they did. I don't. I have my own unforgiveness that I've got to it. But God understands a thousand times over. Because not only did he forgive you of your sins that you did in that moment, that you did before and after that moment, but you forgive them forever, and he's forgiving everybody else's. And he did it on the cross. So if there's anybody to go to, it's God. It's Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we ask, why, 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 how? The only way to get over this unforgiveness is just to simply forgive. But not just saying it, not just saying it, because guess what? There's no fake it till you make it, but forgiveness. 
No, you can like say it like, oh yeah, um, I forgive you, it's, it's okay, just walk away from it. Like that's what I try to do. <laughs> and then yeah, five seconds later, five years later, why is my life moving so slow? Why are things not like not the way I want? Because we're dragging this unforgiveness, this fucking chain we have to this person that we've been like, I define you as this one position in life of the evil thing you've done to me. But I'm not gonna forgive you truly in my heart, so we're gonna you're coming with me. That moment, that person, because that person probably isn't even that person anymore. They probably changed, they probably even said Christ. But we change who that person was in that moment with us, and we take it with us. <laughs> See, we should be asking why forgive, right? Why do this forgive them? See, most of us think we know what to forgive, but don't know what we even need to forgive. So we forgive for the wrong reasons. Forgive for the wrong reasons. You know, sometimes we do it quickly, right? Because it's what's right, right? We do it quickly because we know good people should forget. Good people, good person forgives people for what they did to them. But let's be honest here. We're all people. We all have feelings and we all have emotions. And there's probably only three reasons why a victim would forgive automatically so quickly. You think, you know, you think if you do it quick, you'll be a good person, like I said. That's number one. Or two, uh, you're kind of feeling pressure to forgive, right? You're like, ah, people are telling me to forgive, so I'm just going to say it. Just like Paul said in Philemon, if we read in verse 14 real quick, he kind of says this too, like, to avoid the pressure. He goes, but I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be compulsion, but of your own accord. So even Paul was like, hey, I wanted to be there. I kind of want to be there to tell you and show you kind of how to do it so that it'd be out of your own accord and not just kind of this goodness feeling coming about because it was compulsive or you were pressured to kind of do it. That's not true. That's not true forgiveness when you do that. Or last, you think by just saying it, you'll have like a kind of shortcut to healing. You're like, oh, I'm just going to say it because I know I'll be healed from it. Seven years down the line, I'm still dragging the hook. Still dragging the hook. See, forgiveness is so much more, such an amazing thing that just saying it will not help. And just like love and the love of Christ, and just as you accepted him into your heart after confessing with your voice, you must also forgive from your heart. Forgiveness wasn't made to save the other person or make you a good person, just at least not on its own. Forgiveness was designed to set you free. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness was made for you. And when you truly forgive in your heart, you're saying, I know what you did is not okay. But I also realize that you are more than that. And I don't want to hold us captives to this thing anymore. You're realizing, look, okay, what you did was wrong. They most likely think it's wrong too. But that person shouldn't be belittled by our own thoughts that one moment. Mm. Because we must see through God's eyes. We must, we must, we have to, we have to see through God's eyes. Forgiveness is something. And you can also tell that person, you know, I don't need anything from you because my God is greater. You don't have to talk sorry. Like, that's true forgiveness. But you can say, I don't even need an apology. My God is greater. My God forgave me for the things that I did worse than what you did to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when I say forgiveness is for you, I, I really mean it. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It's not to make things go better. It's one hundred percent all the time, no matter what, is for you. Sometimes it might, it might be for that person. That they might need to see you forgive, they might find Christ. But 100%, all the time, forgiveness is for you, to set you free. But to get to this free, to this freedom, we have to be specific on exactly what we are forgiving. We have to be specific. Well, what do you mean? You can't just say every day. No, you have to be specific because you cannot forgive something that didn't happen to you. And see, sometimes we get all caught up like that. Like me, I, you know, I'll be, oh, oh, I'm always mad. Like, oh, I'm not gonna forgive him for what he did to my mom. What he did to my mom, he didn't do to me. So how can I go and see 
you know, try to give, try to forgive something he didn't do to me. That's another thing that keeps us dragging the chain. It's like, yeah, I forgive him for what he did to my mom. How? He didn't do it to you. It's not possible, right? It's not possible that that's where we mess up. In turn, though, we also see that what, what Christ did for us, right? Because we sinned against him. And how can we forgive murderers if we were not killed? And our dads, that beat our moms, how could we do that? That didn't happen to us. We can only forgive for the pain and the grief and maybe the loss of those people that caused us to feel that, right? I can't go and say, Dad, I forgive you for what you did to mom. I gotta tell you, Dad, I forgive you for how you made me feel when you left me. I forgive you for how you made me feel every time I would find out new stories about how you get mom. I forgive you for the time that you just abandoned us. I forgive you for the time you made me feel the 18 years of my life. I forgive you for that. I can't forgive him for what he did to my mom. That 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 I have to forgive him for the, all the indirect feelings that happened to me, all the emotional things. Like I said, this unforgiveness stuff can be where the pain got you emotionally, mentally, or physically. And it's the same for whatever situation you're in. You can only forgive for what happened to you. Mm. We must look at what happened to us because we get so wrapped up on other things or the evil thing that that person did but we forget what is truly causing that unforgiveness. And most of the time, it is the pain, it's the hurt, it's the grief or the loss or whatever that we need to forgive, but we need to forgive that someone for it. See, God, God will take care of it. He will bring the justice when justice is due. So we can't keep dragging along this baggage, right? Looking to see if we can get justice, right? Oh, I, I haven't forgiven yet because I'm waiting until this person gets justice for what they did. They going to hell today. Like I'm gonna bring them. Like no, that's not that's not our job. Our job is not that. Our job is not the root. Is not the, the one who brings justice. We don't swing the sword. We don't lay down the hammer. Because I don't think anybody's judging here anyways. But our job is to assess assess our damages. We have to look inside ourselves and assess our damages and see what we truly need to forgive for. And we can't just say, oh, I'll forget about it. Right? I'll just, I'll just, I'll put it in the back right now. I'll forget about it. You can't because if you try to forget about it, but you won't, you won't remember what you truly need to forgive for. You have to because you have to know what you've been forgiving, what you're trying to forgive for. Because let's say you try to forget about it, that person comes up, then what happened? Oh, I remember you. <laughs> oh, don't, I, don't even come to all oh, that person. They better not come close to me. They better not. Oh. And, but, and that's the thing when we try to forget about it. Guess what? You're not going to. It happened. It's part of your memories. It's part of your life. What we have to do is assess and see where the damage is at so we can forgive. Guys, we, we, we have to forgive to be free. So that our story, our story, your story, your story, your story is your own with God. It's your own story of God and not something that's chained to us. Not a person, not a situation, not a man. And another thing is, forgiveness comes without expectations. I mean, like, you can't forgive and expect something. You can't be like, I'm going to forgive you and then expect the response or reply that you might need. Or respect, uh, uh, expect a certain outcome, like, oh, I'm going to forgive you, and I want everything to be bright and dandy, and you're going to come and marry my mom again. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness doesn't go hand in hand with expectation. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm going to forgive, expectation, come, and boom. No. Because guess what? God forgave us of our sins, but there's still people in hell. God was it. He's like, oh, I'm expecting everybody that I got saved for is going to come up to heaven. No, because he knows everything. And he knows what's going to happen. And he knows what's going to happen. See, it's never too late to forgive and allow the peace and the freedom that it brings through Christ Jesus into your heart. And there's this there's, there's lesson. It's a lesson for everyone in this small little book, 25 verses in, this, in the New Testament. And after we assess ourselves, we must figure out where on the forgiveness spectrum we land, right? Are we Philemon? 
need to give mercy? I need to say, I forgive you? Or are we, when it's seamless, seeking the mercy, seeking forgiveness? Because we should be on the seamless almost every day of our lives. So we're sinners, we need to ask our Heavenly Father for forgiveness every single day. I want to read real quick um, Colossians 3, 11 to 13. Here, there is not Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. That right there should put into the of belong. The Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And what I want you guys to see is that in the beginning there, God said it doesn't matter who you are. That's basically what he said, it doesn't matter. Back in the day, everybody, they were, they were racist, they were prejudiced to these people, that's why, you know, the Bible's written like that, you circumcised, circumcised, right? Like, you could switch that right now for like American, you know, Middle Eastern, uh, white, black, whatever you want. But God's saying it doesn't matter who you are, who you, who you are or what you've done. Christ is all and in, in all. And so since he has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Well, why don't you guys think, who is it that I still need to forgive? Am I even willing, after, after hearing that, after knowing that God died for me, am I even willing to forgive them? My arm, this is for you. Would you still be willing to forgive them even if they didn't come seek their forgiveness? They didn't come seek the mercy. Should you even forgive the thing? What does holding a grudge even cost you? Think about that. What does it even cost you? Like I said, it costs you the pull and chain of bringing that person to steal your joy, steal your happiness, bringing them along into your relationships. That's why you have trust issues. That's why you can't go certain places. That's why you can't do certain things. Because the whole time you're bringing that one person in that one moment of that one day just Amen. with you. Just Amen. with you. You can't have a nice conversation with them. You can't show the love of Christ. You're lying to yourself if you, if you say you can. But if you haven't truly forgiven in your heart, you can't show the love of Christ because Christ forgave you. And if you can't do the thing that he did for you and so many others, you're just pulling that chain. Mm -hmm. You're just pulling that chain. Pulling that chain. Like the last question I have. It's not true. The last question I have. What if Jesus had the attitude you have? Mm, talk about. It's <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> that one hurt. That one hurt me. God break me. He's like, what if I had your attitude? Forget that. We're going to hell. God had my attitude. We're going to hell. You did something to him, you backstabbed him, like we do all the time. <laughs> if he had ours, and we how we act with forgiveness and unforgiveness, how we don't forgive people, bro, we'd, we'd all be done, right? Yes or no, we'd all be done. Mm. But he's not like that. He's a good God, he's a just God. Amen. But the world says, get your vengeance. They did you dirty, go get them back, get them. Like, what are you planning out, right? <laughs> this is such a lie. It's such a lie. They make this bad thing seem so good, like, yes, you have to, it makes you stronger. It don't make you stronger. Mm. Because has anybody ever taken vengeance or did something bad to someone? Has anybody, has anybody ever did something, whether it be your brother or sister or like anything, like you've done something to get somebody back, right? Even if it's out of fun, right? What do you have to do? You have to plan. You have to get, you have to get like methodical. You have to like think about it. And that whole time, you're just like, hey, I need you to come here. Of the person you were, the evil thing you did to me. I need you to be in my mind again so I'm going to see how I can get you back. How evil is that? How evil is that? Let me bring up the situation that is hurting me just so I can get you back. And it doesn't do anything when you do it. Have you ever truly did that to somebody that did you wrong and felt like, that did nothing? Every time. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not a void to feel that. Because forgiveness is what gets you free, not Amen. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. And guys, there's no doubt that there's some serious stuff in our lives that make forgiveness hard. 
There's some serious stuff. I'm talking about father-son relationship, mother-daughter relationship. I'm talking about boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, marriage relationship. It doesn't matter. There's some hard stuff, right? There's some stuff in our life that may forgive. It's hard, right? It's hard, man. It's hard to be like, I truly forgive. In my heart, I'm not just saying I truly forgive in my heart because I want to love you the way Jesus does, and I want you to know that Jesus does love you. It's hard to do that. But no matter what anger you have inside, no matter what baggage you carry, the message in Philemon and the message in the New Testament rings true. And that is forgiveness sets you free. I want to read one last story real quick. And I only have the last verse up there for a reason. But I want to read, I want to just, I don't know, I'm just going to, you know, three clips notes here real quick, right? You got a guy who was in front of the Lord of the kingdom at the moment. The Lord's about to put him in jail. And he's like, Lord, forgive me of my debts. You guys might know this parable, but he's, he goes, Lord, is in Matthew chapter 18. He goes, Lord, forgive me of my debts. Starts um, verse 21, sorry. He says, Lord, forgive me of my debts. Give me time and I will pay you back. The Lord has mercy with the man. So he sets the man off and says, go ahead, pay me back. But then that same man has a slave who owes him. That same man owes the slave. And I'm talking about he owes him like nothing compared to what he owed the Lord, right? That same man goes to his slave and says, since you owe me, I'm sending you to jail until you can repay your debt. And everybody in the, in the little place saw this. And so they went back to the Lord and said, hey, this man you just thought of He just cast somebody in jail for the same reason, for less money than you, with, with you. And so the, the Lord of the kingdom found out about this. And because he found out about this, he's like, oh my God, what a schemer basically you are. How could I have let you go mercifully and you go and turn, put somebody else in jail for less. You couldn't forgive them the same way I forgave you. So he puts him in jail and then verse 35 says this. It says, because of what that he did, so also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. You take brother, put sister, you take sister, mother, friend, daughter, son, cousin, whatever. But if you don't do it from your heart, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, because what is accepting Christ with our voice if we don't accept him with our heart? Yes or no, right? What is, what is it to just say, Jesus? You could be like talking about Jesus down the street. But if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, the one that was born in Nazareth, the one who was born from a virgin, the one who died on the cross to all our sin and shame. Amen. And you accept that God into your, your heart, the God that stood down from the stone that didn't have to do it, Amen. the one that took everything you've ever done, anything you ever will do, and just wipe it clean. Mm -hmm. What stops us from getting that same forgiveness and putting in our heart for someone else? Again, if forgiveness is not easy, but if we claim to follow Jesus the way we do, we must be filled with his mercy that are new every day for those who have done us wrong. Amen. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you have something in your past that you have yet to forgive. And maybe you need forgiveness from someone else. I think we should start praying God that, that God will work in our hearts to convict, to convict us of a lack of forgiveness. Or if we need it, our need to repent and ask someone else to have mercy on us. I want everybody, you can bow your heads real quick. I'm going to pray for those. And I just want to encourage you guys. Spend time praying, contemplating, and thinking which side of forgiveness do I fall into? And do this every day so that you can see that we need to ask and thank God for his grace and his forgiveness every day and see that forgiving sets us free. It'll set you free. Do you need to forgive someone for what they have done that was wrong to you? Or, or have you hurt someone that you need to return to and ask for mercy? You guys have to remember that forgiveness will set you free only if you choose to truly forgive your heart. You have to